All right, now this video is a supplement to a tutorial I had done on the NetMember site, and it does stand alone in that it, in, in that I hope it engages your thinking when it comes to creating really abstract backgrounds and stuff like that. So I'm just gonna show a couple of things that I go about just really kind of spinning the wheel as far as creating abstract backgrounds, because usually when I start, I end up in a completely different place than where I started, and that's just because of what I discover along the way. So in here, in this case, I'm just starting with a, a simple blue background. And I'm gonna go ahead and create a new layer above that one. And let's go ahead and fill this layer with 50% gray. I'm gonna press Shift Delete, bring up my fill dialog, and it will get me a neutral 50% gray there. Next, I'm going to go under the filter dialog down here to render fibers. Now, before I do that, I wanna make sure that my foreground and background color are set to their default black and white as they are right here, go under filter to render, where is it? There it is, fibers. And I'm just gonna go and leave the settings as they are, 16 and four, and we'll hit okay. And then I'm going to go under filter again, and this time we're gonna to go to blur, to motion blur. When I go straight up and down, so it blurs it along the path of the fibers, which is a straight 90 degree angle here. And I'm gonna go in about 400 pixels on this one. And it will hit OK. Then I'm going to duplicate this layer by dragging it down to the new layer icon here. And then with that new layer active, I'm going to press my Control or Command T to bring up the free transform handles here. I'm going to hold down my Control key or simply right click directly on that document and we'll bring up my menu here. I'm going to go down to Skew actually. And I'm going to hold, go down, I'm going to start to, if I do this, you see that it starts to bend it in either direction, but if I hold down the Option key or the Alt key, it'll actually bend it from the center, or you know, skew it from the center, rather. So I'm just gonna skew it out from there. So when I skew this top section this direction, the bottom will go in the opposite direction. Now it's leaving me a little space here in the corners here. I'm just gonna simply fix that by going under, bringing up that menu once again, and going back to Free Transform and grabbing that outside handle, and then also holding down the Option or Alt key, dragging outward, to expand it to fill in that area. And I'll just press enter. Now, that area that is going beyond our viewable area is still there. Photoshop is still interpreting it as data. So I need to get rid of it for the next effect I'm gonna do. So I'm simply going to press Command A, which will select the entire document here, and just go under Image to Crop. And what that will do is, you'll see it has no noticeable effect, but it has in fact deleted all that area outside the viewable area, of our viewable document here. So, on that file, on this layer, I'm just gonna change its blending mode to overlay. Not soft light, but overlay. And that will generate a kind of mixture with that layer beneath it, give me a, kind of an interesting texture there. Now, I'm gonna hold down my Option key or Alt key on the PC. I'm gonna go into my layer menu here. And we're gonna go down to Merge Visible. And by holding down that Option or Alt key, it will generate a merged version of this document on its own layer. So there's all my original layers still there. Here's a merged version created right there in that layer. Now, I'm simply going to change this layer's blending mode to overlay. Let's perhaps try a different one. Hard light. Overlay was kind of soft. It wasn't as contrasty as I'd liked it to be. So hard light looks pretty good. I'm gonna go under the filter menu here and go under distort polar coordinates. And I'm gonna go make sure I'm going from rectangular to polar, and we'll hit okay. You can see the interesting effect we're getting here. But I'm gonna take it a bit further. I'm gonna bring up free transform on this layer. And I'm going to first scale this out because I'm getting some outer area here that's not part of the spiral that I don't want to be uh, visible. So I'm just gonna scale this overall graphic up a little bit, just like that. Now before I press enter, I'm gonna hold down my control key or right click on that document and go up here and get the warp tool. Or just select warp and it will bring up a warp grid on that object. Now, for those of you who have never used the warp tool, know that once you start messing with this, it is a lot of fun. And this is where a lot of the experimentation comes in when creating these types of backgrounds. In that you can grab any of these handles, move them around, and you can distort the image in real time. What I like to do in this case is actually click inside the grid, anywhere inside the grid, and just kind of push the image around 
in an interesting way, kind of like this. And let's kind of push those pixels around. You can see what kind of interesting effect we are getting here. Just like that. So let's say I've got that all in place. I'm just going to press enter. Now, if along the way, because I've got this on its own grayscale layer, you can see that that image is simply a, gray, a variation of grayscale tones on their own layer. And I've got it blending with the blue through the use of blending modes. And of course, if I don't like that along the way, I can simply change it and get a different effect altogether. So you just toggle through these, see what kind of things you get. Leave that in overlay. Now, of course, I can take that layer and move it around, see what kind of other interesting areas I might be getting. So you can start to see the type of experimentation you can really play with and settings to achieve some really interesting backgrounds. Now, ultimately, if I get the background I like, I simply add an element here, just kind of position that in place, and there you have it. So I encourage you to just play with the filters and the distortion features inside Photoshop, and you'll find that you'll discover a lot of interesting things along the way.